Welcome back to Big Country Politics on KTAB. Well, hello and welcome to this week's Sunday conversation here on Big Country Politics. I am Manny Diaz. This week, our special guest is Alex Gangtano. She is a White House correspondent from TheHill.com, our sister outlet in Washington, D.C. Alex, uh, thanks for hanging out with us today. Happy to. Thanks so much for having me on. Well, you uh, are kind of in the thick of things. Uh, you were in Washington, D.C. on Thursday when Trump was found guilty on all 36, uh, 36 counts in that hush money trial. But you, as, as reporting there at the White House, you, you've, seen, you've really kind of been in the thick of things, uh, to say the least. Tell me, was this verdict, was this surprising to you, certainly someone who follows this very closely? Yeah, so I think I was surprised of how quickly the verdict came out. You know, it was after nine and a half hours, um, a unanimous verdict here from the jury. And I think uh, that surprised me. I thought it would be more in the lines of this time or uh, later on Friday um, afternoon. Um, and then there was, you know, conversation over, is there one jury that might be um, showing more support for Trump? There was uh, conversations from inside the courtroom from the reporters who were there that there was a, a single jury who would give Trump a look that maybe uh, she was supportive of him or whatnot. I don't, I don't know how to explain whatever, <laughs> whatever look they were seeing. So that led to me believe earlier in the week that maybe um, this would be a hung jury or there wouldn't be as a unanimous con um, decision here. So I thought that uh, it was surprising the speed at which it was decided. I think the fact that they found him guilty on all 34 accounts wasn't particularly um, uh, surprising, considering I think it was kind of an all or nothing situation uh, to begin with in terms of this falsifying business records. I mean, it comes down to different uh, counts like what checks, you know, did the president sign himself versus Michael Cohen or whoever else. So there, are, there were some nuances with the charges, but I think that uh, it made sense to me that the jury didn't get down to the specifics and, and just found him guilty on all of them. Thank you for correcting me. I said 36 counts. You said 34, <laughs> 34 counts. So thank you for that. Uh, nonetheless, the there were instructions from the judge in this trial, certainly as it was heading into the decision. And there was a, there was a lot of confusion and perhaps there was some, um, uh, some controversy surrounding all that. Can you explain, can you unpack the, the instructions and certainly um, kind of how this all shook out there? Yeah, so what we heard uh, what was going on in the room earlier in the day on Thursday was that judges, uh, the judge was asked for clarification on some definitions of words, um, particularly that was the word interference, common sense, and reasonable doubt. Uh, kind of interesting, you know, this was a diverse jury in terms of different uh, uh, occupations they had. There were actually some lawyers on the panel, which is kind of interesting. Um, but according to my reporters and colleagues in the room, um, the jurors all appeared to be diligently taking notes on his responses to that. And then there was some controversy that I saw floating around online. And I actually saw this firsthand when I was on X um, on Thursday morning and saw somebody tweet this as if it was you know, the the official uh, say, but it was that the judge actually told the jury that they don't need uh, uh, to be unanimous in order to convict Trump and that it could maybe be split in like a 4-4 situation. That was obviously not true uh, and maybe a moot point considering they were unanimous, but um, they did tell them, you know, clarified uh, some points and apparently he instructed the jury that they must conclude unanimously that a defendant conspired or um, in this hush money scheme, um, but they didn't need to be unanimous in terms of like these specific definitions as to what unlawful means in the situation. So some weird nuance there, but they did have to obviously decide altogether if they found him guilty like a normal jury. Also, there was, uh, you know, talk of perhaps there was threats against uh, the judge there there in, in Manhattan, you know, based on these uh, these jury instructions. Is that right? That's right. You know, this judge has faced a lot of threats throughout this situation. And I think 
the fact that this uh, was thrown out as a kind of a last minute conspiracy theory that he was changing things up and changing up, you know, the the legal system. Um, he faced threats as a result, uh, you know, and it all kind of plays into, I think, the narrative of the conspiracy theory that this is all part of, you know, a rigged system. Um, and, you know, the, of course, the former president uh, says this as well, that that this is all um, maybe the Biden administration's doing or whatnot. And so uh, I think, you know, anytime people who support that theory uh, hear, you know, the judge is changing things up or um, he's playing by his own rules, uh, there's there's going to be backlash against him. And that was the situation that we saw. Mm -hmm. All right. We're going to take a quick commercial break. But when we come back, we're talking certainly what this means for President, to former President Donald Trump uh, and perhaps some uh, some uh, some post game rap from from the from the White House out where Alex reports from on a full time basis. That and more right here on Big Country Politics. Welcome back to Big Country Politics on KTAB. Well, welcome back to our Sunday conversation here on Big Country Politics. I am with Alex Gangtano. She is a White House correspondent from TheHill.com, our sister outlet in Washington, D.C. Alex, we're talking about certainly the verdict on Thursday, the 34 counts, all 34 counts that uh, former President Donald Trump was found guilty on. Let's move forward and let's talk about certainly, you know, We'll get into, you know, what this means for his campaign, but the the Biden uh, campaign certainly shed shed some light on this uh, and, and had some words to say on Thursday. That's right. So right away they came out with a statement. Uh, they tweeted it from the president's official account, and then they also um, dropped it in all of our email boxes, but basically saying that the real decision will come out in November. That actually aligns with what uh, the f former President Trump yes. said in some of his statements too, which um, you know, show up in November and let the you know the American people can actually tell us how they feel about this decision, not just you know the jurors in New York. And so uh, the Biden campaign had the same words to say. You know, just because he's found guilty on these. Uh, accounts in New York, he's still going to be um, most likely the Republican nominee on the ballot in November. And it was they used it as a warning sign of show up in November if you don't want somebody who's been convicted as your president. I think they're leaning into we've seen some polling that, you know, months ago when this was kind of a a hypothetical. Um, we've seen polling that Americans have said we don't want somebody who's been convicted of a crime um, uh, to be president, and that would stop me from maybe voting for him. And so I think the Biden campaign is trying to reignite those feelings and uh, and give people that stark choice for November. Well, as of Thursday on the Hill.com's website, the Decision Desk HQ, the presidential forecast. You know, it read 56 percent uh, in favor of uh, former President Donald Trump to 44 percent in favor of Joe, uh, President Joe Biden. I mean, this is the concern. A lot of conservatives, certain certainly here in Taylor County and Abilene, uh, they say, I mean, if if Donald Trump it was was to be found, which he was found guilty on on the, all these counts, uh, that they're more than likely to vote for him. Or a lot of conservatives are saying that. What, what are you hearing in terms of what this can do for for his for Donald Trump's campaign? Do you think it, it intensifies things uh, for, for him? Do you think the voter base will certainly turn out because they see it as potentially the government going after one of their own? Yeah, I think that's exactly right. People uh, that are not going to lose their support for Trump are going to turn up, I think, in even more numbers because they do see this as, you know, the government um, colluding against him or just that that uh, everything is a, is against him and he keeps doing really well. I mean, the president, like you, the former president, like you mentioned, is uh, beating President Biden again and again in polls or they're neck and neck in some polls. And so he's not losing his support here. And I think a lot of people don't see this as a huge issue for him uh, before November because you know, he is framing this and, and a lot of people agree with him. Like you mentioned that this is, um, you know, people colluding against him, like I said. So I think uh, we're going to see, though, a lot of people talk about how this election will be decided 
in the margins. Um, I think the moderate voters, uh, moderate Republicans, maybe Nikki Haley supporters or Chris Christie supporters or independents, um, I think this is all eyes on them to decide mm-hmm. um, how they feel about this because Trump supporters, I think, are on his side. Biden supporters hear what Biden has to say and his arguments and are on his side. And it's somewhere in the middle, I think, that the decision will be made. Yeah, I think that's where the real poll is among independents and perhaps the people in the middle of the road, where they're going right. to vote, how they're going to vote. Yeah, um, I guess it's now the the million dollar question moving forward. Will former President Donald Trump, will 45 go to jail? It's a fascinating question and, and wild that, you know, we're having this conversation, but how we're looking at it uh, right now is actually some fascinating timing as well. So the president will face, the former president will face a sentencing um, on in a July 11th hearing, which is actually just four days before he's set to officially become the nominee at the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee. So that's pretty interesting. Um, A conviction does not stop him from running for office, as we know. Um, And while he could technically face jail time, first time offenders um, on charges like what uh, Trump was convicted of are often not incarcerated. Um, These are all a type of felony that carries a minimum, uh, excuse me, a maximum of four years in prison. Um, But they oftentimes more, uh, we see people get probation instead of jail time. But on top of all of this is Trump is likely to appeal the verdict. He actually said that um, or alluded to it when he was leaving the courthouse on Thursday, saying that this was a disgrace and that he um, has previously pleaded that he's not guilty. So that appeal process will take some time as well. Um, So we won't get clear answers yet, but I do think at this point, actual jail time is pretty rare, just considering what he is convicted of and, and, you know, the, everything surrounding this trial. So if, if he does in doubt, you know, win in November, perhaps a pardon could be in place, you know, where could he pardon himself? Yeah. So, you know, if he wins the White House back in November, he'd obviously regain uh, pardon power. But that actually wouldn't help him to overturn his conviction because this was a state trial. Um, This hush money trial took place in New York um, and he's likely to appeal the ruling. But if the conviction stands, um, he would not be able to wipe away this guilty verdict. So another interesting nuance here, considering um, how you know powerful the pardon power is um, for a president, but he actually would not be able to use it. Now, a felon that's, that could be potentially win the White House here. That's what's that's what's at stake. So. Well, Alex, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you for, for everything that you do with, on the Hill there in Washington, D.C. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. For Alex Quintano, she is a White House correspondent for TheHill.com, our sister outlet in Washington, D.C. I am Manny Diaz. This has been another Sunday conversation here on Big Country Politics. We'll see you next time. God bless.